on this episode featuring Project 250R. We'll get rid of this old, dull, dingy, shitty disc brake. Jesus Christ. Jogs were all over the f***ing place. What I'm gonna do is pull these apart, clean them up, and see what they look like, and then I will make an assessment from there. This actually has a broken bolt. Oh, you gotta be kidding me. It was nasty in there, man. The RTC scoops just came in the mail, and the box is smashed. So there's a good possibility that these things are destroyed. I can pry with the screwdriver, and hopefully have it come right out the front without breaking anything. We can only hope. And man, these things came out so nice, dude. Does that look f amazing or what? All right, guys, check it out. We got some really good news. I'm gonna flip the camera around in a second here and show you what I'm looking at, and I think you'll have an idea what it is. Boom! That's right, guys. We got some 250R stuff going on. So the good news is the company that I chose to do the powder coating is now accepting projects. So I have the parts laid out here that are going to get painted. Um, just about everything here is going to go to powder coating with the exception of the hubs. Um, I'll tell you why in a second. But we have our Hauser swing arm there. It's a minus one. We've got our factory 43 Nerf bars. All that stuff that's going to be powder coated. We've got the Graden Pro line um, rear grab bar. And of course our frame, which has been ready to go forever. Can't wait to see what this thing looks like in that sand color. So pretty much all this stuff is ready to go. I already pulled the bearings out of the Hauser swing arm and I cleaned it up really good too. Even if your powder coater is telling you that you can bring stuff in dirty, it's really a good idea to clean the stuff up because you gotta think about those guys too, man. If they're getting in junk and they have to clean it off and stuff, you might as well make it easier for them and they'll appreciate that. So we've also got the American flag radiator guard that Shell Vest made for me. We've got the uh, Lone Star pin style seat latch we're gonna get powder coated. The front seat latch, which I know those are notorious for being kind of weak. And I was thinking about possibly making a custom one of those. I might do that in the future, but for now we're gonna use the OEM one. Now there is one more piece that's gonna be going out for powder coating that wasn't laid out. And that is the radiator scoops by RTC. Now they were supposed to be here today. So hopefully they'll be here tomorrow. As soon as that gets here, I'll be taking the parts over for powder coating. So in the meantime, I'm gonna take the stickers off of those factory 43 Nerf bars, just so that the guys over at the powder coating place don't have to deal with that. And I also wanna clean up that Graden Proline grab bar. I wanna take the little bit remnants of the Graden Proline sticker off of it and clean up the back where you can see somebody had wheelied out before and drill out what looks like rivets from an old number plate. So we'll just clean that up, make sure that that's ready to go. Otherwise, everything for powder coating is set and ready to be sent out. So you may be wondering why I have our hubs and our brakes and everything laying out in front of me. Well, that's because all of this stuff needs to be refinished for Project 250R. So that's what we're gonna do in this video. I have the front hubs, the rear hubs, the spindles, and all of our brake calipers, rear master cylinder, front master cylinder. We're gonna refinish all this stuff. And the reason that I decided not to powder coat the hubs is because the hubs on the Banshee have held up really nicely. Everything on the Banshee was painted. If you guys watched that series, it was all prepped properly, painted, clear coated, and everything's been holding up really nice on the Banshee. It's been a couple years, and I've taken it on plenty of riding trips up in the coal mines. It's been smacked with stones and everything. It's spent an entire winter outside and it's still looking really great. So I have no question that the durability is gonna be pretty good on these hubs. And as far as the front master cylinder goes, we're gonna finish this just like we did the thumb throttle. We're gonna do that kind of metal flake gunmetal look and NPM made us another trick cover that I cannot wait to show you guys. It's completely custom for the M309R. It's gonna look really badass on here. We'll also throw our ASV lever on. We have a little dust cover that goes on. It's gonna look totally different, update it, and it's just gonna look badass. And then of course, we'll refinish our rear master cylinder. That's an easy job. And as far as these calipers go, I may actually leave the front calipers the way they are. The condition of the original paint is so good, it doesn't even make sense to do anything with them. So I'm gonna clean them off and see what they look like once they're clean. We might just leave them the way they are. If not, we'll refinish those as well. The, the rear caliper is most likely gonna be refinished because that one looks like it's had a little bit of damage and that's the one that you really see anyway. So we might refinish that with some caliper paint and then we'll be good to go, man. And once we're done with all that stuff, we've got a couple packages over here. We did get some new parts in for the 250R. We have some motor parts in this box from LED Performance. And of course we have this 
kind of obvious. It's the Duncan bumper. It's powder coated flat black and it's going to look really, really good on this build. So hopefully we will have quick turnaround on the powder coated parts and we can start assembling Project 250R. All right, first things first, let's take these factory 43 stickers off. I want to make sure everything's ready to rock and roll. So the second those radiator scoops come in, we can send this stuff out for powder coating. that sticker residue off with a little bit of lacquer thinner. All right, so we got the sticker off and you can see these two looks like old rivets where this uh, number plate could get mounted up. So I wanna drill those out. And also you can see just a little bit of scrape marks I want to smooth those and then we'll hit it with a scotch right pad and see if we can just eliminate that entirely. Definitely looks a lot better now. I'm going to smooth it out a little bit more with the scotch bright wheel. Tell you what, that cleaned up really nicely. You can still see there's real small imperfections. You gotta remember powder coating is a pretty thick finish. So all the little imperfections and stuff, you probably won't even be able to see once this is powder coated. And some of you guys might be saying, you know, why don't I just, I could do the whole grab bar like that and this thing would look brand new and it would look really good. Uh, but I really want it to match the color scheme of Project 250R. So we are going to powder coat this. And then the last thing I wanna do before we box these up is mark each part with the appropriate color that I want, just so that we don't get any mix-ups or anything silly like that. Now, I've actually never had anything powder coated before, so this is a new experience for me. And the company that I'm gonna be using is called Bonehead Performance. Uh, they're actually a pretty well-known company, not just because they're local to me, but they've been doing bike stuff and car stuff, ceramic coating headers and things like that for a really long time. And apparently a lot of people ship parts to them. If you do wanna ship your parts to Bonehead, you can do it just like this. Although I do recommend you pack them much nicer because of course it's gonna actually be shipped. Now, like I said, I'm gonna be taking this stuff myself, so I'm not too worried about it. And then they have these two forms that you fill out. You have a waiver, a liability form, and uh, of course the coating form where you put all the parts and everything on there and the color codes that you want. And they have all their color codes on their website. It's really nicely laid out and uh, the colors seem pretty accurate even on the screen. All right guys, as soon as those RTC scoops come in the mail, we'll take this stuff over to Bonehead. In the meantime, let's get those brake components and hubs restored. All right, first things first guys, let's take care of these hubs. So we're gonna clean these things up. First order of business will be knocking out the old bearings and seals. And then we'll get rid of this old, dull, dingy, shitty disc brake. discs are stuck on pretty good. I could probably get them off another way, but I'm going to use this hydraulic press because I know it won't cause any damage and we have it. So hydraulic threw it all over the place. All right. So these things are ready to be clean. I'm going to take all of our spacers and throw them in the tumbler as well as our disc brake hardware, so that stuff will clean up like brand new. And I'm gonna hit the utility sink, clean these up, and then we'll move on. All right, so these cleaned up pretty nice. 
And this is when it would be really nice to have a sandblaster. But actually, guys, just kidding. These are going out for powder coat. Yeah, that's for all you trolls. So the next order of business is going to be these calipers. Like I said, these are actually in really good shape. I haven't even cleaned these up yet. So I may actually just leave these the way that they are. So what I'm going to do is pull these apart, clean them up and see what they look like, and then I will make an assessment from there. I'm gonna take out these old brakes that, sh eh, can't really tell. They're probably still decent, but it doesn't really matter. We're gonna put new pads in there, and we might clean and paint this caliper stay, most likely. So let me pull this stuff apart. It feels like all the rubber and stuff is good, so that's good. So let's pull these apart and clean them. Here's our old pads. They're actually probably about 50%, it looks like. Pull our rubbers out. And our brake clip. And then this is our rear caliper. These ones actually look like they have a good amount of life left. So we will scrub these down, see how nice they clean up. Like I said, I don't think I'm going to have to paint these front brakes. These look like they're going to come out pretty nice. Now some of these rubbers are torn, so I really don't want to reuse these. I believe you can get rebuild kits for these calipers, pretty inexpensive. So I'm going to hop online, see if I can get those pieces. All right, so we're back and I was able to order those parts. They actually had the rebuild kits on clearance from Rocky Mountain ATV. So we got the two front brakes for $5 a piece as the rebuild kits, the back one was 20 bucks. So for 30 bucks, we'll be able to rebuild all of our brakes. That's so gonna be really nice. Uh, give you a look at the rear caliper here. You can see this one's pretty beat up. So this one, we will paint. These front ones are in good shape. We're gonna leave those as they are. And of course, we're gonna refinish the rear master cylinder. This is actually in really good shape. I'm probably just gonna scuff this up and throw the same gunmetal color we're going to be doing on the front master cylinder on it. Uh, so we'll clean this up. We're going to start with the front master cylinder. This actually has a broken bolt for the brake lever. So we'll start by removing that. Jeez, that's really in there. You gotta be kidding me. All right, that wasn't too bad. Wow, I just opened this up and it was nasty in there, man. The brake fluid, I don't know if you can see that little bit that's in there. It was all this dark, thick brown color. It was definitely time to be replaced. We've got all this scum around the edge and stuff. It was actually tough to pull the cap off. Makes me wonder how long it's been since this thing's actually been serviced. So we'll clean all of this out. And you guys will be happy to know that the RTC scoops just came in the mail and the box is smashed. So there's a good possibility that these things are destroyed. Got some 320 grit sandpaper here. Well, that looks a lot better. I also took a razor blade and scratched off all the scum and stuff that was stuck up around the side. You can still see the stains where it was, but it looks a hell of a lot better now. And I will flush this out too with some brake cleaner just to make sure we don't have any remnants of any junk in there. So we should be able to make this thing look pretty much brand new. The only thing I can't restore is this window. You can see it looks like there's little cracks in it. This is most likely the original master cylinder. But once it's painted up and all, I think it's still going to look good. All right, guys, let's get to cleaning this thing up. Now remember, 
It doesn't have to be completely paint free because we're going to be coating this, but I want to make sure that we have all the loose paint re removed. We have a nice clean surface and we have it roughed up so that the paint bonds. Well guys, I'm having a change of heart here. These Scotch-Brite wheels really leave a nice finish on aluminum. That looks so good. I think I'm gonna finish this thing off and get all the paint off. And I might just leave it with an aluminum finish. Now to clean off the rest of these areas that are too difficult to get to with the big pad, I'm gonna use this little abrasion wheel. I just bought these, came in a big multi-pack. So I'm kind of excited to see how these work. I've used them um, from out of Dremel kits. There was usually like one that would come with them and they worked really well. So let's try it out. All right, well, I think that looks pretty good and we'll just leave it like that. That should look nice. Just kidding, guys. I decided we're gonna paint it because I wanted to match the thumb throttle. All right, now I just learned something very interesting. As I was doing this, we, I was planning to rebuild this anyway, and I was looking at rebuild kits and whatnot, and I just can't, I can't put this back together looking like that. That looks like shit. They actually make little replacement pieces of glass, and they're not that difficult to replace. Literally, they just push out from the back, apparently, and then the new ones press in place, and they're super cheap. They're like $4 for the piece of plastic. So let's try it out. Let's see if we can push this thing through. And then we can actually make this thing look like brand new. I'm not sure how easy it's gonna be. <clears throat> I got an idea. All right, I've got this in the vise and I have a little bolt in here that fits in the window. It's kind of difficult to do with one hand, but basically right like that, it fits in there pretty good and I can pry with the screwdriver and hopefully have it come right out the front without breaking anything. We can only hope. Well, it actually worked really well. Here's the old glass. You can feel it's plastic. Thing is thrashed, man. So we'll have to press a new one in, make it look new. And there is a little O-ring in here too. All right, now I've got this thing ready for paint. I cleaned it up really good with this tool right here. The attachment goes in here, cleans up really nice. All these areas I was able to clean up really nice with some soap and degreaser. And I also scotch brighted it with a red scotch bright by hand just to make sure that all of our surfaces are nice and scuffed up because the last thing we want is to go through all this work and then not to get a good bond. So I'm gonna mask off areas like in here because I don't want any paint on those surfaces. It might not, might make it difficult for pressing the new window in. And also, of course, we don't wanna get any paint in where our plunger goes, stuff like that, and the top as well. So I'm gonna mask this off, we'll paint it, and we'll see what it looks like, man. caliper on a stick. All right, so all of our parts are cooking. I did go ahead and order all those brake parts kits. So unfortunately, guys, you're gonna have to wait until one of the next videos until we see the end result. As soon as those parts come in, we will assemble the brakes and we'll do some before and afters. I'm just kidding, guys. You know I wouldn't let you go without at least showing you some results. So I had the parts laid out here that were painted and man, these things came out so nice. I love the finish of this paint. And it's really durable too. It always comes out nice. I put primer on here, three base coats and two clear coats. This should be pretty durable. And this will be drying for a few days before we assemble this. So we should be good to go. Here's the rear master cylinder. And here is the rear caliper. That Duplicolor engine paint has been the best uh, paint for putting on brakes. I've been using that stuff for years. I put it on all my cars and everything and it lasts for years. And granted a car is a little bit different, but at least temperature wise, that stuff holds up amazing. So I think it came out pretty nice. 
now I wasn't really sure if I should do this in this next piece that I show you it almost makes me feel like a criminal because it's just so pleasurable to look at but I'm gonna show you anyway it's the master cylinder cover from NPM dude does that look f amazing or what and on the inside you can see it has NPM on there oh man this literally is gonna look so good we have to put it on. Oh, that looks killer. It's gonna match the thumb throttle perfectly. Just imagine with the ASV lever on there. Uh, let's put it on. All right, now here is our ASV F3 lever. And you'll notice it's got this tang right here, which is not OEM for the Honda. I'm not sure why that's on there. And I actually called Blake from DBC Racing uh, because I know he's familiar with these things just to see what the deal was and apparently there's supposed to be instructions in the box I guess they didn't put them in with mine and uh, it just snaps right off with a pair of pliers so I'm gonna try it out Wow I'll smooth that out too but let's just mock this thing up and see what it looks like that looks amazing Wow this came out better than I thought it would Oh, dude, just imagine when we have that new inspection window in there and the stainless steel bolts back here. Oh, man, this is going to look so nice. All right. All right. We'll do one before and after picture right here. We got to at least show at least a little bit what it's going to look like. Once this thing's totally done, we'll do another before and after in the next video. Before I let you go, let's open up these parts and see if this RTC radiator scoop set is destroyed. Who the hell knows? You can see the box got mangled pretty good. UPS guy had a little bit of fun. All right, so we'll start up with this one because we already know what it is. And as I'm opening this up, guys, please hit that thumbs up button if you're enjoying these videos. It helps me out a lot. All right, so there you have it, man. Duncan bumper. I would say arguably one of the best looking bumpers ever designed for a four wheeler. Honestly, it pretty much looks good on any quad that you put it on. Not that there aren't other good looking bumpers. It's just that I feel like it's the cleanest look you can possibly go with. We went with flat black, which should match Project 250R really nicely. And uh, it did come with, I'm assuming, stainless steel hardware. I was expecting this to be bigger. That's what she said. Oh! LED performance, you know it's gonna be good. All right, so check it out, guys. LED performance. And I have to say, these are very high quality stickers. These are going to the top of my list of favorite sticker providers. So this is our HPI ignition. It's got everything in here. Got our CDI. You can see on the back, it says one cylinder, two stroke. Very simple system. I know a lot of you guys were saying go to uh, CR250. And that's actually how I came across this. There's our coil. It's all very small. There's our spark plug boot. And of course, check this out. The flywheel is actually internal. I've never actually had one like this. But it goes on the inside. It's pretty cool. You can see the HPI logo on there. So this is supposed to be a good, reliable setup, and it's a little bit cheaper than running a CR250. And of course, parts are readily available for it. The CR250 stuff is starting to become slim. And this is the mounting plate. Nice piece right there. Looks like it's billet. And this is a weight for the flywheel. So Arlen from LED Performance was telling me that this setup on the 250R especially when it's being used for motocross, uh, this setup is likely to stall. So this weight is supposed to rectify that. So I took his recommendations. We'll be throwing that on there. Pretty cool. We'll be going a little bit more in depth on this in another video, but I did want to show you guys. So I'm pretty excited to try this out. It looks like it's going to be very simple. And there's also a dial indicator that Arlen's sending me to help install this thing. All right, let's open up this box and see if these RTC scoops are damaged. You might say, oh, this, the finish on those is terrible. Well, it's got a condom on it. So we'll pull that off. 
So these are from RTC Racing. You can see the fit and finish is really nice on them. And I chose them because you can see how unique they are. I do like the traditional boxy style scoops that you see on a lot of 250Rs. In fact, that's actually one of my favorite looks. However, I think this is gonna set me apart from the crowd. I really like to do things a little bit different and you don't see these RTCs too frequently and they really are just sharp. They look awesome. Now you're gonna to have to pay if you want these. They run about 150 bucks, but I think they're worth it. And they're super lightweight, but I guarantee these are not chintzy. These are really nice. If you guys wanna pick them up, you can pick them up on HSD Racing. I will put the link in the description below. There's actually a segment on HSD Racing that has most of the parts that are going on Project M309R, and you can look through them there. So aside from the custom covers that are being made for Project 250R right now, the uh, quick change clutch cover and everything, and the graphics kit, I think we have everything that we need to complete Project 250R. So once this stuff comes back from powder coating, we'll be taking that on Monday. Dude, stuff is gonna start coming together. I'm really excited for this. It's probably gonna go together really quickly. I'm really, really excited to see what this looks like, man. So for you guys that are new to the channel, definitely check out some of these videos. Uh, I have a lot of good news on the Maverick. Uh, pretty much everything for the clutch setup came. We can probably actually get that together and begin riding it. So I will probably be working on that in the next video. And I am going to get a budget video out for the YZ125. I've been working on that as well. So there's a lot of good stuff coming in the future. Like I said, if you're new to the channel, definitely check out those projects. There's a lot of good stuff. And I appreciate everybody watching. If you enjoyed this content, please give me a thumbs up. Definitely check out your Mike Sabo merch. All those proceeds go to helping out the channel. And I will see you guys in the next video. Peace out.